first event of this thematic program. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's a pleasure to, to be here and to give a talk in this, this auditorium. Uh, 2002, 18 years ago, I was here in the same auditorium as a student following analysis course of Ugu. And uh, that time I couldn't imagine that I could come here and give a talk in this very important place in this very famous auditorium. And uh, so I will talk about uh, some results about uh, generalizations of the Euler obstruction. I will talk about some results uh, with uh, my co collaborator from, from France, uh, Nicolas Dutet, and also some results from our uh, former student, Ellen Santana. Uh, so Ellen Santana, our former student, uh, she finished the, the PhD last December and now she's starting a, a postdoc in, in São Carlos at ICMC. And uh, Nicolas uh, is a professor in Université d'Angers in France. Okay. So I will talk about the Euler obstruction and some relations with results that's close to the state of Milner number when you think in the uh, very first case that is where we have our uh, germ of function f from cm to c. Uh, and in this case, if you have an isolated singularity at the origin, Milner proved that in this case we have a fiber that we call the Milner fiber, and this fiber has a homotop type of a bouquet of spheres and the number of spheres of dimension n minus one, where n is the dimension of the space here, is what we call the Milner number. But, but if we change and we work with a function now defined in the singular space, in a singular variety, uh, we can and we have in fact a lot of kind of generalizations of the Milner number for functions in this situation. So uh, it's uh, important to say that all that I will talk here about f with isolated singularity at the origin for a variety that uh, for a, variety, a singular variety or singular space is always in the stratified sense. Okay. So one of these generalizations, possible generalizations, is called the Euler obstruction of a function that was defined by Seade, Bracelet, Massé, Bracelet, Massé, Paramés, Varan, and Seade. And uh, they defined this, uh, this invariant. And after that, Seade, Tibar, Verjovsky proved that this invariant counts the number of Morse points of a morsification of F on the regular part of the variety. So it's really very close to informations that we have from the Milner number and the smooth case. So in order to, to study this, this situation, uh, I worked with uh, Nicolas, and we were trying to, to find a kind of uh, leg rower formula for the Euler obstruction of a function. And during this uh, work that we're investigating, we found an a invariant that it was not the, the Euler obstruction of a function, but is related to the Euler obstruction, of, Euler obstruction of a function, as I will show you. And we defined, and I will explain later why, we, def we called the Bracelet number. So this invariant is the Bracelet number, and it counts, in some sense, uh, this kind of information that is count, it counts the number of Morse points of a morsification of a function in the, Milner, in, the, in the generalized Milner fiber of another function. Well, so as I said before, in this talk, I will present some results uh, about this, this situation. The first results are proved by, uh, in this paper with Nicola uh, some years ago. And the new results uh, were proved by Ellen Santana in her thesis. 
And after that, the second part, I will talk about the global case. So uh, there is a notion of Euler obstruction, the, the global case, case, and we would like to understand also if we have a, a function defining a global variety, what we could uh, have as informations, okay? So I will start saying about the reference because it's very, very important. So of course, uh, MacPherson's paper is uh, very important. Uh, Roberto talked the, about the history of all, all of this in his talk. And uh, the Euler obstruction was defined as a tool in this, this paper, MacPherson's paper, as a tool to prove this conjecture of the Lenin Grotendieck, as Roberto said. And some results that I will show you is really inspired in this, uh, this uh, uh, article. In fact, in a very important result in this article, article is that uh, we can compute the Euler obstruction by, by multiplicities of polar varieties. So we can compute the Euler obstruction as an alternate sum of uh, polar multiplicities. And of course, this, this paper is the, the paper where Brasile Massa Parambes Varanciar defined the Euler obstruction of a function. And a very important uh, paper for us, and at least for me, a very hard to, to read is this paper of uh, Massey. And we, it, I think it's a very powerful article with a, a lot of very strong results. And with these results, we could prove uh, our, our, our paper, our results. So the first part, I will talk about some results of this paper with Nicola and the generalizations that Ellen Santana made in her thesis. And in the last part, I will talk about the global Euler obstruction and the global Brasilian number that is inspired in these two papers. The first one is from Seade Chibari Verjovsk, where they define the global Euler obstruction. And the second one is a paper of Gias, who was in Chibar, where they studied the regularity at infinite, infinite for maps. Uh, and uh, we, we try to relate this, the, these two informations to study the global case uh, in the singular setting. Okay, so what I, I'm planning to do, uh, I will recall the definition of the Euler obstruction. And as Roberto said, I will give a different way. The, the definition, uh, in fact, was given by Basile and Barrier and Schwartz. Then I will define the obstruction of a function, the, the Brasile number. Uh, here I will recall the results, uh, that the previous results with uh, Nicolas Dutet and present the results from Ellis Santana. And in the end, I will present some results in the global situation. Okay? So our setting, we will uh, work with a reduced complex analytic dimensional variety or space. And uh, X will be our representative, a very small representative. And U will be an open set in CN that contains this X. And we need a witness stratification of this uh, representative. So during all this talk, uh, we'll have this representative, the, the open set, and a stratification that is a witness stratification, okay? So uh, the first thing that we need to uh, define the Euler obstruction is the Nash modification as Roberto talked uh, in, his, in, in his exposition. Because as he said, one of the goals is to find uh, uh, another uh, bundle that have this information that if you have one point, there's a regular point, you have the tangent space, but we can look for the singular point and you need some information. And the Nash bundle will, in some sense, uh, answer the, the, this need, okay? As Roberto said, there are many ways to do that, and this is one of them. 
So the Nash modification, uh, in some sense, is uh, you take one point that you have in your singular variety, and you assign the tangent space. If you have this point that is a singular point, what you do is that for each point you have the, for each point that is in the regular part, you have this pair. Sorry, because I, I forgot to say. I take a Grassmannian of uh, the planes in CN, where this is the dimension of X. X is equidimensional, as I said. And we can construct this map that for each point we have the, the X and the tangent space. It's only defining the regular part. And then we take the closure of this. So that is the, the Nash modification. So what we do is for a, a regular point, we just have one point, that, that's X and the, the tangent space. And as we take the closure on, the, uh, on, this, on this guy, on this point that's a singular point, what we will have is all the limits of tangent spaces that appears when you take all the sequence of tangent spaces that go for this point. So in this situation, what we have for any generatrice that you can uh, pick here, you have a generatrice, you have a tangent space, and if you uh, follow this, this S1, for example, it's a continual way to, to a, a continual path. And for each one, you have a different tangent space, and you go to the same point. So on this point, what we have is something that is uh, like a S1. So if you have a cone, the Nash modification will, fee, will be the cylinder. And as I said, we need a, a something to put in the place of the tangent bundle. So we need to define something that is what we will call the Nash bundle. The Nash bundle will be defined like this. We have our representative that is inside the open set in CN. So as we have a uh, equidimensional variety of dimension D, we can take here this product, product U with the Grassmannian of D planes in CN. Here we have that map that I presented before that for a uh, regular point goes to here and you have X and this, the tangent space. We take the closure here inside is what to, we define as the Nash modification. So this is the Nash modification. But if you take the Grassmannian, we have the tautological bundle and we can make a trivial extension of this bundle to U uh, times the Grassmannian. So this guy is the trivial extension of the tangent of the tautologic bundle of the Grassmannian for this product. And we can restrict this, uh, the, this bundle for X tilde. And this guy here is what we called the Nash bundle. And as we, we need and we would like that would be, if you take a regular point, what we have is, in some sense, only the tangent space. Okay. And to define the Euler obstruction, uh, we need to, uh, to define and to, to use the notion of a radial vector field. So here, I'm in the stratified sense, as I said before. And uh, as Professor Eblin said, it's very easier to, to work with forms, but uh, I will use vector fields uh, just to make some pictures and uh, you can see what is happening. But uh, when we need to compute things, it's easier to, to work with forms. And uh, uh, it's very similar to also what Professor Ebling uh, defined. And this, what we have is a vector field and we say that it's radial in this point, the, the singular point, if we find a epsilon that for any other small epsilon that you, that you have, that you take, all the balls that appears, and you took 
and you took the, the intersection with this uh, variety, the points is in the intersection of the, of the variety. When you take the vector field, it's point outwards of the ball, okay? Or, or the sphere, okay? So this is uh, a radial vector field at this point. Okay, so to, uh, to define the Euler obstruction, we need to construct a co-cycle that is the obstruction co-cycle that is the, the obstruction to extend this vector field for all this part. So using obstruction theory, we can construct this co-cycle that lives in this uh, cohomology, and we take the, the fundamental class uh, in homology of, uh, of this, this guy. So what we want to, to understand uh, is uh, what is the, the obstruction to extend this vector field to this part. So uh, first, if you have this vector field, that's a radial vector field, Bracelet and Schwartz proved that we can lift this vector field, and then we can uh, ask if we can extend or not this vector field with, without zeros, without zeros in this part. Okay, so if we can do it, it means that the obstruction is zero, and if we, there are some obstruction, it will be an integer, okay? So that is the Euler obstruction that uh, McPherson used to define the, the sharing class for singular varieties. Okay? So some uh, information uh, about the Euler obstruction, some nice properties. So if you take a point that's a regular point, the Euler obstruction is one. One thing that it's very useful for us is that the Euler obstruction is constant uh, on a strata novel which in a stratification. If you have a curve, the Euler obstruction is, is the multiplicity of the curve at that point. And this is a very nice formula that was given by, by Tessier that we can compute the Euler obstruction as uh, the, Euler, or the Euler characteristic of a cut uh, of the variety. So here I will just recall the, the, the polar varieties. Uh, Roberto also, uh, also talked about them. But uh, it's just because uh, if we recall what is the, the polar variety, we can state this very important formula that was given by, by Le Tessier, that the Euler obstruction is a sum, is an alternate sum of the polar multiplicities, and one thing that I will show you that in the global case, Seadi uh, Verzhovsk gave an, an, a version, a global version of this result, and also uh, the Bracelet number is related in some sense to this result, okay? So the polar variety, it's, it's so, something that's not difficult to define. We, we have our, our variety and we take D will be some, some space, and uh, we take the, the critical set of this projection, and we take the closure. So we can do, can do this in the dimensions from one to D minus K plus zero to D, D minus one, and we have the dimension D, D minus K plus one for our variety, and we can compute the Euler obstruction using the multiplicities of these varieties. But there is another important formula uh, that was given by uh, Bracelet and Seadi. And what they presented is that we can compute the Euler obstruction as a sum of, here we have the Euler characteristic of the stratum cut by a generic hyperplane, but we need these weights, and the weight that we need to, to compute the Euler obstruction is as exactly the Euler obstruction of the strata. 
And that, as I said before, uh, the Euler obstruction is constant on a strata. So this guy here is well defined. We can take any point in this strata, and this is uh, well defined. We can compute. So the Euler obstruction is uh, we can we can compute, and the, in this guy here, in some examples, we can make uh, a kind of induction to compute the Euler obstruction. Well, but uh, Professor Seade that said that one day he was giving a talk about this result, and uh, Professor Paramez Varan was in the audience, and he asked him what would happen if instead of a uh, linear projection, uh, we use a function f with isolated singularity. What you'd, would change in this formula? And in this case, what we need? We have a function that is defined on x. Uh, here is the representative that I, I'm working. U is the, the open set, so f is a restric the restriction of a function f defined in this open set. We take the gradient vector field, the, the conjugate gra gradient vector field of this function, and we can project this on the strata. So we have this, this vector field, and we can project it. And using the processes of Marielle and Schwartz, we can find another one that's tangent to our variety, to, in a stratified sense, and it's homotopic to the first one in the board, okay, in the intersection of the, the sphere. So this one is another one that is related to this one. So this one is, is a tangent vector field, a stratified tangent vector field, continuous vector field, that is homotopic to this one in the board. So if we have this guy here, and we are working with uh, uh, a function with isolated singularity at the origin, it means that it's very close to the situation that we have here. The difference is that our vector field don't need to be uh, radial, okay? But we don't have singularities in this, in this part. So we can play the same game. We can lift using the lemma of Bracelet and Schwartz, and we can make the same question. We can construct the cocycle, that's the obstacle, ob the, the, the cocycle to the obstruction cycle, and we can evaluate on the fundamental class, and we will give a number, an integer, and that is what, what they define as the Euler obstruction of a function. And they proved that the Euler obstruction of a function is equal to the Euler obstruction minus this part here that is similar to the formula of Brasilele and Seade, but instead of uh, a generic linear projection, we take this function f with isolated singularity at the origin, okay? So we can, by this formula, we can understand that if you take f as a generic linear form, so the Euler obstruction of L, that's a generic linear form, is zero, okay? Okay, so just to, to say what are the the more stratified uh, function in this setting. So if you have a function and we work on a stratum that, on a stratum that is of dimension bigger or equal to one, and a point is there, it's Morse if for each singularity is a Morse as we know in the uh, usual sense. But if the point is in a stratum of dimension zero, what we need is that the differential of our function should be, should be transverse to all the limits of tangent space. So if we have these two conditions, we have a function, a stratified uh, Morse function, okay? So, and using this definition, Seade, uh, Tibar, and Verjovsk proved that the Euler obstruction of a function counts the number of Morse points 
of amorcification of F in the stratified sense on the regular part. Okay, so they proved they they gave another uh, result that uh, can link this invariant with the Milner number. Okay, so and before to to define the the Bracelet number, uh, I need some definitions, and one of them is this definition of good stratification that was given by by Massey in that paper in topology. So a good stratification of X relative to F is a Whitney stratification, but when you take VF, where VF is the variety given by F on X, is uh, given by union of strata, and when you took, you look out of this, this guy here, we also have a Whitney stratification, and we, when do you have a pair of strata where one is in VF and the other is out of VF, but they are, uh, one is in the closure of the other, we need to have the AF tone condition. So it means that if you have a, a point in the, in the stratum of uh, low, uh, lower dimension and you have a sequence in the other one, when you take the tangent space and here will be to the fiber, and not to all the stratum, to the fiber in the, this stratum, and you take all the tangent space to the fiber of each point that is coming, so the limit should contain the, uh, the tangent space of the fiber in the stratum of low dimension, lower dimension. Okay? So, and uh, inspired of the multiplicity uh, formula of Bracelet Lenciad, during my, my PhD, uh, Jean Paul Bracelet asked me to try to find a kind of formula, a, a formula of this kind, where I could compute the Euler obstruction of a function use relative polar multiplicities, okay? So, in fact, he had, uh, I, I, I went to, to Marseille in 2005 to work with him, and he had a very nice uh, project, and it, it was to study the characteristic class and bivariant classes and things that are really interesting when he talked to me. And uh, first he said, Nivaldo, before that, you need to understand the Euler obstruction. And uh, I'm still trying to do that. Uh, that's really hard. And another thing is that I think, he said that I think that if you find a way to compute the Euler obstruction of a function, in this way we can apply to study this kind of uh, characteristic classes. And I tried to, to do that, and he sent me to talk to many mathematicians to, to try to do, but I couldn't uh, prove that uh, in my thesis. But uh, Nicolas Dutet was in the jury of my, my thesis, and, and we continued to work on, on this. And sometime later, we found, in the, let's say in the first version of the paper, we could see that this difference of the Euler obstruction and the Euler obstruction of a function, not this guy, but this difference could be computed as an alternate sum of um, polar multiplicities in the case that uh, were uh, by fibers of F, relative. So we could do this in the first, with many, many uh, hypotheses, and then we were working and we could uh, erase some hypotheses of that, and we could uh, find in a nice way that the oil, th this difference could be computed as uh, alternative sum or relative polar multiplicities. And we, we wrote the, this paper, but we need to, to define this as an invariant because it was this guy that was, we were working to uh, find the, the Le Grower formula. So I, I, we are talking, so as, as Jean-Paul asked us to, to do this, asked me to do this, so I, 
I think we could uh, call this Bracelet number, and we call this Bracelet number. So this way, where in fact we are defined, and it's in the final version of the paper, in fact is backwards of all this history. So we, this is, was the last step, and in the end we find uh, this definition. So the Bracelet number, if we look the, in this talk, it's very natural to define as this Euler, the, this Euler obstruction with weights, where the weights that appear here are the Euler obstruction. Because as I said here, and Roberto said in his talk, the Euler obstruction is a constructive function when you, we use the Whitney stratification. Okay? Okay. So uh, I, just, I just need one definition to state uh, our result. So if we have our V that is a good stratification, and we, we have G that what Massey call prepolar with respect to V, uh, it means that when I take this guy here, G, it has isolated singularity at the origin, okay? So if we take this kind of G, what we prove it is a kind of Legrower formula that the Brasilian number of F in X minus the Brasilian number of F in XG, XG where this is the is here, né? is X intersection with this set, is counts the number of Morse points of amorcification of G on the Milner fiber of F. So this is, uh, in some sense, a kind of Legrover formula. And this result was, uh, uh, extended to by, by Ellen Santana for a more general setting. And to state her result, we, defi we need these two definitions. So she used uh, this guy here that is very close to the definition of polar varieties. It's almost the definition of polar varieties, but we, t we take F and G that don't need to be linear projections. And we work out of the singular part, but also out of the, the zero setting of F and the zero set of G. So we take this, the regular part of this, this, the, this map that is defined by F and G, and we take the closure. So it is what uh, David Massey called symmetric relative polar variety. And also she needs, because what she would like to work is to take G more general. In fact, what she did, she worked with G with uh, critical locks of, of dimension one. And in our result, we had the isolated singularity at the origin for G, not for F. We don't need for F, but for G. And she used this uh, definition that to take a tractable function at the origin. So the, f the function G is tractable if we take that when you have this uh, symmetric relative polar curve, polar variety, it is a curve or amplity. And when you take any strata V alpha inside the, the zero set of F, we have that G has uh, no critical points except if this stratum is the stratum that contains the origin and the origin can be the, the, a, a singular point. Okay, so as she worked with uh, a G that has a singular locus of dimension one, this locus can be, uh, be split in many stratum. We can, maybe we can have some part in one stratum, another part in another stratum. And she called, she called for each stratum, VI, she called BI the part of this curve that is on this, this stratum, okay? And if you are on this stratum, and with the condition that she asked here, that this guy intersection with the zero of F is only the origin, we can just take a regular point and we can compute the degree 
of f on this on this part of the, the, the curve, okay? And using these conditions and the multiplicity uh, she denoted by mfbg. So Ellen uh, had this, proved this, this result. So this part here, for example, if we have g that it has isolated singularity at the origin, we have this, all this is zero, and we have our result, my result with Nicolas Dutet. But when we have G that has uh, singular locals with dimension one, what ha we have is some correction that appears the multiplicity of each part of, of the, the singular locals in the, the stratum, and this difference of the Euler obstruction of X in a point of BG, and X intersection the zero locks of G in an other point, the or same point of the strata. And as a nice corollary, if we take L, a generic linear form, she proved that the, this difference of the Euler obstruction need this correction to compute the number of Morse points of G, of G in this intersection. So we can compute uh, this number of Morse points in, in this intersection, but we need to correct with this information. And to fi finish this first part, there is a, there is a result of uh, Le and Tessier that, uh, as I, I said in the beginning, that we can compute the Euler obstruction using this Euler characteristic. And in the paper with uh, Nicolas Dutet, we could uh, prove that the same Euler obstruction here is equal to the Bracelet number, because what we did, we changed from the, the smooth case to the singular case. When we move to the singular case, as another thing, uh, another interesting thing that Robert said, we are working the stratified way, so we have some index, some normal index that appears. And in this case, uh, we compute and we have a, a, a Euler characteristic with weights where the weights are the uh, Euler obstructions, okay? And Ellen also proved a generalization of this formula that this, this Euler characteristic of with weights, now if you have, we, have, we have G tractable, so we don't need to have isolated singularity at the origin, is this Euler obstruction, but we need now to correct with this part that computes these multiplicities of the the parts that we have of the singular locals on each, on each uh, stratum, and this difference of Bracelet numbers. And the last result of this part is that in this situation, she could also uh, have this nice information that we can compare what is bigger, the Bracelet number or the Euler obstruction and if L is a uh, generic linear form, she proved that the Bracelet number is bigger of the Euler obstruction if D is even, and the Bracelet num the Euler obstruction is bigger if D is odd. And now I go to the global part, to, to the global situation. So in the very similar way, Seadit, Bari, Verzhovsky, they proved, they defined, in fact, the Euler obstruction for a variety. So we take uh, algebraic variety, uh, uh, x-dimensional algebraic variety x in Cn, and also they proved a global version of the Le Tessier polar uh, multiplicity theorem. Okay, so, First, to define the Euler obstruction, we need 
a radial vector field at infinity. But the definition is very close to the local case because the stand we have a small ball, now what we have is a very big ball. And the standoff say that it's all it points outwards for smaller balls, we, we are saying that always uh, point outwards for bigger balls, okay? So we have that we say that V on X is radial at infinity. If we, we find this large ball centering the origin and that for any other radial bigger than this radial M, we have that V is point outwards. And in the, their paper, they proved the, the, that it's possible to find this uh, situation, this uh, radial vector field in, uh, at infinity. But if you have this, we play exactly the same, the same game that we play in the local case because we have um, a vector field that has no zeros in this board of our, our ball in our sphere and we have the Nash modification, and we can lift as with the same lemma from uh, Brasile and Schwartz, and we have, again, the, the, uh, the, the uh, we have the, the, the obstruction to compute, and using this same, the same, the, the same way to compute, we can define the Euler obstruction of, uh, of a variety. And this Euler obstruction, global Euler obstruction, when X is, is smooth, is only the Euler characteristic. And they proved, Le Siad, Le Chibar Siad, they proved that the global Euler obstruction can be computed by this formula where here we have the, characteris the Euler characteristic of the stratum, and here we have the local Euler obstruction in any point of a weakness stratification. That is, we know that is constant, okay? And another thing that they proved is a LTC kind of uh, formula. So what they do, they took L, a generic linear form, and they compute the number of uh, critical points of this form on the regular part, okay? And then they took this slice, the, this transverse slice, and on the slice, they do the same thing. So they took another generic linear form and computed the number of Morse points, of critical, critical points, so they have another uh, information. And they do this up to the level where we just have the degree of X. So what they proved is that the Euler obstruction minus the Euler obstruction of this slice is up to sign the number of critical points of L on our variety. And using this first line, they proved this formula that the Euler obstruction is the alternate sum of these, these critical points. And these critical points, in fact, count the multiplicity of the global polar varieties. So these elements here compute the uh, multiplicity of global polar varieties. So they proved a uh, Letessier formula to the global case. But it's not my question, it was Paramis Barancare question, but I can do now. What happened if I, instead of L, a generic linear projection, I take F, a polynomial function on X and uh, arrived on C. And so, as the Bracelet number, we could have some informations and the Euler obstruction of a function we also had good information. One idea was to try to define these two invariants in the global situation, in the global case, okay? So, but as I said before, we define the, the Brasile number in a way 
uh, and then we redefined backwards in some sense because we, we, we knew what we would have. So in the, the global setting, we made this di directly. We defined first the, the global Brasilian number because the global Brasilian number, in some sense, is only the Euler characteristic with weights where the weights are the Euler obstruction. So we defined the, the Brasilian number like that. And then we define the Euler obstruction of a function, where the Euler obstruction of a function would be the difference of the Euler obstruction defined by Siadji Bari Verjovsky and this notion of the Brasile number. Okay? So in some sense, what we expect? In the local case, we know that this invariant is related to a sum, alternate sum of relative polar multiplicities. So we just define this, like, this guy like this and we can see if we have uh, some information as in the local case, okay? And we also would like to understand some information that is happening in the, the infinity, okay? So first, we can define this Brasile number in a more, more general setting, just using here any constructive functions, okay? So the first one, we take this as the Euler obstruction, but we can also make the, the, same, the same processes with alpha as any constructive, constructive functions. So the Brasile number at infinity for a, a point A will be, we can compute this character, the Euler characteristic of this fiber intersection with what the complement of a, a ball of, of radius uh, Ra, and alpha here is a constructive function, and we take the limit of C that goes to A, where C is the point where I, I'm taking the fiber, okay? And when we take the characteristic function on X, we just put as lambda F A X alpha. And this notation is very different from the, this other one because uh, after the, 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 the referee pointed out that what we, we were computed here in fact was the same invariant that Chibar used to compute information at infinity. So this is another way to define, uh, and that he used this notation, uh, an invariant that compute the jumps in the infinity. In fact, the, the invariant that he, he used is what we define the total Brasile number. The total Brasile number is this sum because this guy will be uh, zero uh, out of uh, at maximum uh, finite number of points. And we take this with this uh, characteristic function and this information here counts the jump of the Euler characteristic f at infinity. Okay, so just to state the, the result, uh, I will define the complex link. Uh, Roberto also said something about the, the normal index and uh, it will appear here. So the complex link is an uh, object that's very important and it appears in many, many results, many results related to the Milner fibers. And to define, we need two things. Uh, we need to, to pick uh, a stratum. So let's say a stratum V of the, the, the certification uh, curly, curly V of, of our, our representative. And we need to take a function that uh, it's not where the differential is not a degenerate covector of our uh, stratification. So it means that the, this, difference, this differential is transverse to all the limits of tangent space, as we uh, talked about this before. And we also take a normal slice. A normal slice will be the intersection that we take. Uh, we take a close, a close complex manifold 
that's transverse on 2V, and this intersection is only the point where are, we are working. So the complex link is the intersection of X, this closed variety, our ball, closed ball, and the fiber of this function. Okay, so to, to work on the global setting, we followed the, the path uh, of the work of uh, Ruas, Diaz, and uh, Chibar. And we made similar, uh, a similar approach, but using now the, the stratified sense. So we start with, uh, with CN and then we take the, the definition that uh, they use it and we adapt it to the, the singular set. So this is the definition that they use, but here I put the complex case, but it's the same definition. So we take X in CN and we take the, the, the projective space PN with these uh, coordinates and we take this guy here, this H infinity, as the hyperplane at infinity, okay? We can see X in the, we can see X that is in CN inside PN. And we can take the closure of this guy here in PN. When we do this, we also can have, we can find our stratification of, of this, this closure. And uh, we can make the intersection of the closure of our X in the projective with this hyperplane at infinity, okay? Okay, so as this guy is projective, so our stratification is finite, locally finite, okay? And we can take our F that's defined in X and we can take the graph of our function and take the closure, okay? Here we are in the, the projective. And we can make the intersection of our graph with this product that here we have the hyperplane at infinity, okay? And here we have what we call X infinity, okay? And uh, before I stand the, the result, we will need to use this definition, the, the relative co-normal. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about many things that uh, Roberto already talked, but his is relative, uh, in our, our case. So what, what we do, we take all the, all the fibers of our function G, and we take all the, the hyperplanes that contains our, our tangent space, and we take the closure, all of this. So that is the relative conormal space relative to G, okay? Okay, so we have this big definition, uh, but uh, the idea I think is not very complicated. We have some details to, to, to be careful, but what we want to, to define here is if, F is regular at P0 at X infinity. So X infinity, in some sense, we are taking care of, uh, we are closer to infinity. Our fiber is going to, to infinity. And what we want to, to, to be regular is that our, we take a, uh, a D, a disk, that is closer to, that, that's centered in the point that we are studying in, in C. And we look all fibers that we have for all points in this small disk. And the fibers are transverse to all spheres, okay? So we have the transversality for all spheres when you are looking for fibers that are, for fibers of points that are close to this point in C, okay? So we have uh, a, big, a big definition, but in some sense, is, this is the information. We want that our fiber is transverse to the spheres, okay? So this, is, this was the definition that uh, 
uh, who was GS Antibar used in the, in, the regular, in the real case. And we just adapted this for the, strat the stratified situation is that we have a finite number of stratum and we can look this stratum as varieties and we can ask if a point is regular or not in any stratum. And if it's regular for all the stratum, we say that is regular, okay? So that is our definition. So we have some stratum, so we have for the stratum i, I take the restriction of our function to the closure of this stratum, and we can do everything as I did in the last slide. We have this same guy here for this stratum. We, we have this, this point, and we can look if for points that are near there, the, the spheres are transverse to all the, the fibers that are, are close to that point. So, and we say that T0 is a stratified asymptotic whole non-regular value if it is not, not stratified whole value at infinity. So if it fails, we say that is non-regular, okay? So in the morsification in the global sense is very similar to, to the morsification in the local sense, okay? So, we say that F tilde is a morsification of F if when we, we perturb F and we take the singularities, all the singularities are more singularities. We just, during the computations, in the global case, we just need to be careful because when you uh, make a perturbation, some, uh, some singularities can appear at infinity. So that is the difference of the local and the global. We need to be careful if uh, some strange can, can appear. But uh, the definition is almost the same. We just have this kind of perturbation and for each point that we have, singular point, it's our, they are uh, more, more singularities, okay? So, uh, so using this, these definitions, we proved that if we have C a regular value of F, wheat is not a stratified asymptotic non-whole regular value. So we have that this difference of the Euler characteristic, the Euler characteristic of X and the Euler characteristic of this fiber is the number of Morse points of, of a, a morsification of F on this, this stratum v, VI and here, appears what Roberto said, that is the normal index. So we have the, we count the number of points, but we have this normal index. And we also need this guy here to, uh, to, to balance this formula that are the jumps that can appear uh, because the information at infinity. Okay, so uh, we some 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 results now that we we had in our paper. So we proved that when you have C a regular value and we have this guy guy here, so we have this guy here e equal to zero. We have the Euler obstruction minus the Bracelet number is the number of Mars points on the regular part minus this total Bracelet number. But if we have F as L, a generic linear form, and apply in this formula here, what we'll find as a corollary is a siadit bari verzhovsky formula. And if you remember, this were the first step to find a, a Le Tessier formula to the global case. And up to now, we had some some, as I said, it would be nice to, to find a, a kind of formula uh, relative in the global sense, but we still didn't have, but I think that we have a, a close clue from here that we can find a kind of formula in this, in this setting. And that's all, and thank you very much. <laughs>